Hey there, YouTube. Corn Cobb Piper coming at you. It is a Sunday morning. I hope everybody's had a great weekend. Uh, welcome to episode 13 of my Puff and Burley series. My personal quest to become a Burley lover. I hope everybody's enjoying this little experiment as much as I have been because I definitely have been enjoying it and I would definitely say that I am becoming a Burley lover. Uh, so for today's review, we are going to be reviewing the last of the Old Joe Krantz series. Uh, this is the Old Joe Krantz Blue Label. Another uh, Jeremy Reeves blend, uh, carrying on the tradition of uh, Bobernowski, who was the uh, master blender, used to be the master blender at Cornell and Deal, and uh, the original Old Joe Krantz was his brainchild. Uh, so this is a Burley and a Virginia blend. Now Cornell and Deal will call this a cube cut. I really have to question how they, they classify uh, their cuts of tobacco because um, a lot of times I do not agree with what they classify it as. So let me show you what a Cornell and Deal cube cut supposedly looks like. Adjust the camera here. So as you can see obviously there's some ribbon in there. Uh, some coarse cut tobaccos and uh, a little bit of uh, cube tobacco as well. Uh, so I, you know, I would definitely not call this a cube cut. This is definitely a coarse cut, obviously with some cubes added. Uh, I'm not really sure why Cornell uh, has such issues uh, with, uh, you know, stating the cut of a tobacco correctly. Uh, no other tobacco companies seem to have any kind of an issue like that. Uh, but really it's not that important. What's important is how it smokes and how it tastes. Uh, once again, you've got uh, red and uh, bright Virginias in there, uh, as well as white and um, white and uh, dark burly, uh, both in leaf form and cube cut. Um, so let's go ahead and light this guy up. We'll discuss it uh, a little bit more. And let me do the pouch note first. Almost forgot again. Because it's becoming a tradition here. So pouch note. Definitely pick up some uh, dark fruit like fig raisin from the Virginia. Maybe a little bit of citrus or sourness. And a very, very, very light touch of a hay note from uh, the Virginia. <coughs> Smoking it today from my Alpacia Kirby. <coughs> this is probably my fifth bowl, I think, of it now. This one to me uh, smokes better out of a briar, although I got a nice smoke in my cobs as well. Uh, just something about having a larger bowl makes this blend, in my opinion, develop a little, little better for me. Uh, but I would have no problem smoking it from a cob as well, and I definitely will again. So this blend um, is very, very, to me, savory. Uh, the Virginias do not add a lot of sweetness to it, although there are some. Uh, it does add some citrus notes, um, as well as a certain richness, I guess, to the smoke, the mouthfeel. Very, very rich, but overall impression of this blend is a earthiness and a nuttiness. Reminds me a lot of uh, actually mushrooms. So uh, if you take the earthiness taste from a mushroom or put it in a tobacco, that's what I get from this blend. Like I said, a very, very uh, small amount of sweetness from the Virginia. And then the, um, the Burleys do add a uh, subtle um, toastiness. Uh, as well, toasted nuts, think toasted almonds. Definitely get that mushroom, uh, earthy uh, taste to it. 
and then uh, there's also a little bit of a uh, like a woody note to it, like uh, uh, almost like a cedar wood. This is something that I could definitely see myself enjoying quite a bit if I were out, say, like camping, uh, canoeing, something like that. Uh, it reminds me of, you know, definitely the great outdoors, especially with that with that uh, earthy mushroom mushroominess that this blend adds to it. From some of the other reviews that I've read. Uh, people have noted a molasses and a uh, cocoa taste, cocoa note to this. I do not pick up on either either of those. A lot of the other reviews mention a distinct sweetness to this as well. And I don't get that either. The, the sweetness to this one is very, very subtle. This is a very, very tobacco tasting tobacco, if that makes any sense. I can see where someone would pick up on this and say that it tastes almost cigarette-y uh, sometimes, uh, but not not always. But in my opinion, uh, pretty pretty decent blend. Uh, like I said, this one probably, uh, when I revisit it, will be uh, sometime this winter when I'm doing something outdoors, uh, either you know at a at a nice river, camping, canoeing, something like that. This will be a, a great blend uh, to smoke during those kind of activities. Uh, once again, the uh, this comes Cornell and Deal Dry. Um, does not bite no matter how aggressively you smoke it. Burns down to a fine white ash and overall not too shabby of a, uh, a tobacco. My five star rating for Cornell and Deal um, Blue Label is going to be a three out of five stars. Definitely one that I would revisit, uh, but definitely, like I said, <laughs> during certain circumstances, uh, you know, am I going to revisit this? Uh, definitely uh, a nature-involved circumstance uh, for sure. So now, having smoked... All four of the Old Joe Kranz blends. I'll go ahead and order them, in my opinion, uh, from worst to best. So coming in uh, last place is going to be Old Joe Kranz White Label. Coming in at... Uh, so that's fourth place last. The White coming in in third place um, is going to be the Blue. Second place is going to be the red. And in first place, uh, the original, Old Joe Krantz, in my opinion, was uh, the best of the four. Original and red came very, very close. I think, let me check my notes here. I rated the Old Joe Krantz, um, the original, a 3.5. And the red label uh, a 3.0, which I guess I rated the <coughs> blue a 3.0 also. Uh, so we're going to actually go ahead and move uh, that. Um, you'll find my pen. We're going to move the rating up of the uh, red label just a little bit. And we're going to make that actually a 3.2 now. So in my rating, 3.5 Old Joe Krantz original. 3.2 Old Joe Krantz Red. Uh, we did the Old Joe Krantz uh, Blue at a 3, and the White got a 1.5. So obviously, the White was my least favorite. Of the four blends in the Old Joe Krantz uh, category, uh, but none of them horrible. Uh, you know, even though I gave the white label a 1.5, I gave it a 1.5 just because it was very, very underwhelming to me. It was very monotone, one-dimensional, didn't have a lot going on to it, and just was a very, very simple tobacco. Um, and, it, you know, once it got the halfway point to the bowl, I had a hard time finishing as well. Uh, but the other three are definitely very, very good and smokable in my opinion. 
Um, the only one that I probably would buy again in the future <coughs> is going to be the original Old Joe Krantz. I may at some point <coughs> down the road pick up some more red, uh, but not, <coughs> excuse me, anytime in the foreseeable future. But it did have a nice, you know, addition of uh, Latakia and uh, Cavendish to it. Which brightened the blend up quite a bit. So, once again, uh, Old Joe Krantz uh, Blue Label uh, got a 3.0 out of uh, 5 stars. Thanks for uh, watching YouTube. Um, number 13 of the Puffin Burley series. And as always, keep on piping.